All right, I took the starter off and you can see oh, this is freely turning. And here's the actual adapter plate and it's on solid, like it's bolted in. I can feel down here, feels like the welds broke on the uh, flywheel wheel starter adapter or whatever the heck it's called. So that's why I'm stuck. So, as you, here's the transmission. I've got to pull it. And also, I want to mention that because of the, a lot of times people use the uh, oil pan for support. This one being plastic, I'm not going to do that. But I think that's pretty obvious. Um, there's even not a whole lot of room down here. Uh, though I will probably support this engine at some point. Uh, with the transmission and even early on I'm probably gonna throw like a ratchet strap or some sort but the first things first and I'm just gonna take it I'm gonna take an easy day it's July 4th um, I'm just going to I'm going to probably unbolt my exhaust flange which there's not much exhaust here it ends literally like right here at the skip plate anyway I pull the front drive shaft or a prop shaft where are you going I'm gonna pull the rear, and I'm going to, I'm going to cut off the uh, the muffler right behind. There's no real need for a muffler with this engine. Uh, it's already pretty quiet. If you just get it going out the tail back, tailpipe, it's it's gonna be pretty easy on you. Uh, I'm also let's see if we can make, let you see it. Um, it is hard to see. But on the uh, channel above the, the transmission, I'm going to try to put some sort of different heat shield stuff. And also, there's some wiring I need to secure while I'm under here. But yeah, basically at the end of the day, I'd like to just have the skip plate down, have the prop shafts out, have this muffler out, and... Uh, I'd like to do the top two bolts of the transmission because they are by far the hardest. And then from there, I'm going to sit back and maybe uh, enjoy 4th of July and have a couple beers. But uh, like I said, there's not much I want to do today. And all I'm going to really do is <clears throat> pull, the, I'm not even going to drain the transmission or uh, transfer case unless I have to. Plan just to leave them in place. And then back them up like, I don't know, five, six inches. Just to, for enough room for me to get in there and work. And we'll call that good enough. Um, I know that's pretty lazy of me, but I'd rather wait and do a major, a major uh, transmission deal when I have more time and when I have it planned and when I can just pop out the transmission and pop that new transmission. It's also going to be experience pulling a transmission. So, because I've not done that. I've, I just pulled the engine before. So, I don't think that's uh, going to be too big to ask for today. And then, hopefully, in a couple of days. Sorry. And then, hopefully, in a couple of days, I'll have. Uh, well, this weekend, that's when I'd actually like to pull the transmission. That's when the real work will begin. Today, just getting it kind of supported and making some room. I probably need to jack up my... I haven't jacked up the rear end yet. Just the front end. Um, but, you know, that's... I kind of want the front end up a little bit more. I figure gravity will help me out a little bit. Maybe I'll do the opposite when I install it. I don't know. But, again, it's going to be hopefully a simple day. Transmission is out. Also gotta say it's kind of cool. Uh, on Spotify, the the Weezer, something like the greatest man in the world, or something like that. I don't know the exact song. It came on, but here you can see the 
<laughs> it came out, I took a little bit of going, but not, not too bad. But anyway, I'm gonna go through here and look, see if there's anything looks damaged. But I'm just gonna move this, uh, move this transmission out of the way. Clean off the studs, things like that. Wasn't too bad of a job, but I was being pretty leisurely with this. I probably should have let the engine come down just a little bit more. I was having some issues with clearance of uh, some of this wiring and whatnot. But that was, uh, wasn't too bad. To get it out, we'll see how it is going back in. I think there's one more glory shot here. Here it's some more of my wiring, and um, I still haven't I still haven't pulled the clutch or any of that stuff yet. I wanted to get this stuff cleaned up. I drilled even a couple of holes so I could attach some stuff to hold my wires. And also, I want you to see that's where the DOC is. So I'm trying to keep stuff off of that. The one thing though that's close that I haven't been able to really address is in the um, the heater core hoses. Uh, I'm not really sure I'm going to even be able to do anything for that. But anyway, I also went ahead and added a little bit of this uh, Noik. I can't say it, so here. There's some of the the stuff that I peeled off the back, this little bit sticky stuff. Basically, I think this is just like a sound deadening material, which is okay. And then I assume just because this is probably some type of a mylar, luminized, whatever, then uh, it probably does keep a little bit of the radiant heat out. Um, but it probably won't do much for the uh, um, oh, uh, conductive type heat. Or it might do a little bit with convection or whatever. But in any case, I wanted to get all this stuff uh, out of the way and done. I, I had to clean this a little bit. and then, uh, But I wanted to do that before I took any of this stuff apart so I could try to keep everything clean when I go back together with it. But uh, I, I, do have, I do have the other piece in there that that went out that broke on me uh, I guess here's something else that I guess is kind of just so it's a nice view of the uh, bottom of my shifter I need to clean that up and then grease it up real good but anyway I hope this stuff helps just a little bit with sound I, was, I don't know it's not gonna do much but uh, I assume because you know you kind of think of this as a bell you got to think that like there is a little bit of noise kind of amplified and I'm doing hand motions and you can't see <laughs> but uh, I figure that's doing a just amplifying that a little bit uh, but anyway while I'm in here and I have access to it it seemed like ah might as well do something and also the floorboards do get a little bit hot so um, I'm wondering if that'll help me just a little bit but anyway I'm just getting the wiring so it's not like hanging all over the transmission because that's basically what it was doing before uh, and now I don't really have to worry about it as much getting on the uh, the DOC, the exhaust flange, whatever you want to do, the turbo, which is obviously hot. So anyway, I'm going to go through there and uh, I'm going to pull all this stuff. And then I'm going to check my Cummins manual and try to do exactly what it says to, to do it, to put it back. I probably will use a little bit of blue Loctite though, even though... I don't really know that blue Loctite would do anything with this kind of temperature, but I've got to check to see what the temperature ranges are. This, this stuff probably, I mean, the engine, the coolant, I mean, it's not going to see over probably 215 degrees Fahrenheit, so I, I don't really know if that's going to be a big deal or not. Anyway, i got a lot of work to do. I'm really hoping to get the transmission in today and then maybe button everything up tomorrow. Also, I worked on my, um, <laughs> sort of. I worked on my exhaust a little bit. And like you see, a very little bit. Really, I've got the wrong angle. So, I'm thinking what I'm going to do, if, unless I go try to find an exhaust shop or something, is that I'm going to uh, do maybe something like the, call it pie cuts or lobster somethings or something like that. I might try to do that, but I'm not going to do a whole lot of that right now. I'm going to mostly just take this off from here back and just leave it for a while. It's really like this engine's not very loud. 
So I don't look here. The only reason I'd rather go back there is just for one. I don't want any kind of fumes near the cab. I want to get this stuff as way as far back as possible. And uh, yeah, that, that's really what it's, it's just the fumes, which I, I don't notice. I just, you know, it, it just seems like a good idea. But anyway, I got some work to do. Yeah, you can definitely see where the, the welds broke. So that's a pretty small cross section. I guess I didn't think anything about it. I just assumed that they, you know, welded helm over much they needed to. But they didn't. <laughs> the the new one, the welds that uh, look like they're much, they're at least much wider, much more cross section. Maybe on both sides even. I, I don't know for certain. Uh, I will I will certainly compare them in a bit. But I still got to get the rest of this stuff out so I can get to it. All right, I had to readjust down here. I have to take this off. This this guy won't slip through. So, I, I wasn't looking forward to that. <laughs> anyway, I what I did is I actually supported this from the top. To uh, I anchored it to the top. Used just the back um, uh, <clears throat> anchor point or whatever. And then I just lifted up on that a little bit then i'll let let this down let the jack down and then i just moved it back so uh because again i don't want to be jacking on on this plastic it, if you spread it out and eh, you probably be okay most of this weight is being held by the uh the engine mounts but yeah i'd rather be safe than sorry and and i can already tell that the big difference between these welds and the welds on the new one so I'm much more comfortable with the new one. However, this is still a lot of an, a lot of a little bit of annoying work, I guess. But oh well, <laughs> what choice do I have? All right, there's the back of the aluminum adapter. Um, inside here, it didn't do any damage, so that's good. You can see how tiny those welds are, man. Now that I look at it, I'm kind of pissed that I even <laughs> didn't mention anything about it see there's nothing on the back now the new one that looks like that's got so much more weld so yeah it's almost that was just I should I should have even seen that but oh well live and learn I guess I'm assuming this part of the tooth goes towards the starter Yeah, that makes sense. All right, I get this stuff together. It's hot as hell out here. One of these installs. Look to see how it's one set of the teeth, how they angle in. See that that lead, the chamfer. It's the same way as the starter. So make sure. Let's see how's this going? So you're going to be in kind of like this. And you can see how, sorry, see how they kind of mesh in there together. So it'll kind of ramp up in there and helps lead it. I don't know if you can pull this out or not, but whatever. Okay. That's just, you know, make sure this is pointing to the front of your vehicle. I don't think I noticed that in the first one or mentioned it or whatever. I, that's how I did it, but you can see that one was like that too. Again, just something small to check out. <laughs> make sure it's welded, yeah, check. And then from there, make sure that your teeth are oriented right. Okay, got the part replaced. <clears throat> got the clutch back in. And just a quick uh, thing on torque values. Um, on these guys, I think they said something like 22 foot pounds. I did about 24 foot pounds, then I went around, I did it several times, made sure they didn't go, and then I kind of checked them by hand to see if, see how, make sure they felt snug. Um, I think there's, these are somewhere around 24 foot pounds as well. Now, 
basically everything now okay now for the adapter i did the 24 foot pounds for it like the starter ring but that actually started feeling like i was stretching so i just kind of snugged them so i don't really know actually what i did on those but it's probably somewhere south of the 22 or 24 foot pounds <clears throat> on the um adapter flywheel all that other stuff i basically did the same procedure on all of them i put them to 22 foot pounds of torque like i do the cross pattern and then i would go around after i did a cross pattern i'll like just make go around in circles just make sure nothing turned and then individually what i would do is back them out like 180 degrees of course i just used an impact to just kind of pull them out real quick and then i would just snug them back down real quick and then i would hit them back down to 22 foot pounds I did that into a cross pattern, then I checked them around again, and then I, uh, and then they say to turn it 90 degrees. Now what I do, and I'm not sure, I'm sure that someone will, you know, it's not right, but anyway, I used the, uh, I used an impact and let it go 90 degrees from, uh, from where I was. So like I'd pick a spot on the impact and then go until it was 90 degrees. So that's what I did. I'm maybe that's not perfect, but hey, that's not what what uh, screwed me up the last time. So <laughs> hopefully I'll, I'll go a while without having to screw something major up. But yeah, that's pretty much just the thing on torque values. I pretty much basically did. I I pretended like the main adapter was like a flywheel, so I did that to the the Cummins manual, and then <clears throat> from that, then I had the actual. Um, I think there's another adapter plate wait a minute adapter okay there's the part that actually goes to the there's the part of the adapter that goes to the engine then there's an adapter that goes to the adapter and then then the flywheel i guess seemed like there was something else but whatever anyway i guess i did it a couple times and then i did the um and then i did the clutch so now uh, it's basically just about ready to go back in i, I lubed my uh shifter and now I'm going to start trying to get the transmission in. Yippee. And when I do that, I, uh, I coat the input shaft. I haven't done it yet. Uh, but I coat the in sh input shaft with grease. Just go around, put everything with grease. And, which I have a buttload of grease. But I like having a little extra, uh, extra here. That way, like if I kind of ram it in a little bit, then you, you do have some pressures taken off by the grease. But yeah, this is, this part always kind of stinks. Who knows how long it'll take me. All right, got it made it back together. Now, not completely, like I just got a bunch of loose ends to, to get straightened out. Also, and this uh, ratchet strap really, really made that thing go in a little bit easier. It only ended up taking me about 30 minutes to get it in. So, which, which that's the area where like you're always kind of guessing, like, well, how long is this going to take me? So, I got a couple. I got to get the bolts at the top in, uh, which is really pretty easy on this setup. With the one-inch body lift, that that really gives you a lot more room. Plus, I've removed the. Uh, stupid external torques things that they've got from from the uh, Jeep OEM so anyway I just got to get it buttoned up